In this EDM video I want to take a closer look at the electronics and address key points for future improvements. As shown in the first video, the circuit is the rustic version of a boost converter with the components joint wire copper wires. The circuit is fed by the 12V line of an old computer power supply and an output voltage of up to 40V is generated by the main components. At this point I do not want to deal with the complete functioning of boost converters but only mention a few basic properties. The coil is connected in parallel to the input voltage and so gets charged when the MOSFET is turned on and the inductor gets discharged when the MOSFET is turned off. The induction voltage generated by the coil is now added to the input voltage and thus charges the capacitor via a diode to a voltage higher than the input voltage. This cycle is repeated several times until the desired output voltage is reached. A microcontroller type 80 mega 328 is switching the MOSFET and monitors the output voltage across the capacitor. Once the capacitor has been charged to the specified voltage, a shot for spark erosion can take place. If the electrode connected to ground, currently still the 1mm drill on my machine, is brought close enough to the workpiece connected to the positive voltage, a spark jumps over and the capacitor is discharged very quickly. A very high current flows which has a sufficiently destructive effect on the workpiece and erodes it as already shown in the previous videos. For a shot, the energy stored in the capacitor is used for the erosion process, hence the term electrical discharge machining. The following applies. The higher the voltage across the capacitor and the higher the capacitance of this component, the more energy is stored in the device. Again, I use my microscope to observe the drilling process through a 0.1mm razor blade with the water pump turned on. For the first drilling, I leave the circuit as in the previous videos with the output voltage set to 30V. After a total of 115 shots, the drilling process is finished. In previous videos I already mentioned that less can be more. I therefore replace the capacitor for the next attempt with a smaller one with only 1000 microfarad. With this component, the bore is completed after 156 shots instead of the 115 shots with the capacitor which is more than twice the size. I have now soldered a 470 microfarad capacitor to the circuit. With that, 342 shots are needed for the bore. As the last capacitor I use a 220 microfarad device, which is just one tenth of the capacitor used in the first experiment. With this, 503 shots are required for the bore, which is significantly less than 10 times the time required with the large capacitor. This also proves that when it comes to sparks, physics is not as straightforward as might be expected. If you compare the first shot of the 2200 microfarad with that of the 10 times smaller 220 microfarad capacitor, we can see that the letter created a significantly smaller crater, but the factor in terms of diameter is only one half. 
When the hole is finished, we can see that with a smaller capacitor, drops of resolidified metal have not formed as thick at the edges. Furthermore, the resulting hole is somewhat more circular. In the previous video, I showed that sparks do not affect both electrodes in the same way. So let's change the polarity next. Now there is ground on the workpiece and the plus 30V line runs to the 1mm drill. 825 shots are now required for drilling, which is clearly more than with the original polarity. It can also be seen that the grooves on the metal surface of the razor blade are disappearing. Light grey deposits are forming here. In addition to the sparks, redox reactions also contribute to the changes on the metal surface. If, as here, the workpiece forms the cathode, the excess of electrons cause that metal ions in the water get reduced to elementary metal deposited on the surface. Steel does not only consist of iron and the water molecules also contribute to a whole series of redox reactions in the vat. The diameter of the finished hole is slightly smaller, but not because the spark gap is smaller, but because the drill has become thinner. The iron oxidizes at the anode and so metal ions dissolve. These redox reactions do not take place in the plasma of the sparks, but on the entire surface of the drill that is immersed in the water. A rust red layer can clearly be seen on the surface of the drill. There is a lot to tell about the problem of tool electrode erosion in upcoming videos. As the next parameter, let's increase the voltage with which the capacitor is charged to 40 volts. The energy stored in the capacitor increases squared with the voltage. With a 220 microfarad capacitor, now only 262 shots are needed to pierce the razor blade. High energy per shot means more material is removed, but the resulting edges are less smooth. It takes longer with less energy, but the results are more precise. Anyone who can write software therefore has a clear advantage. In this experiment, the first 180 shots are made with a voltage of 40 volts to be able to drill quickly. Then the microcontroller switches to a voltage of only 20 volts, which makes the edges of the hole much smoother. After a total of 544 shots, this hole is the most precise so far. Since I paused the drilling process after each shot to take a photo with my microscope, the rate at which the capacitor charges was not important until now. In practice, however, one would like to generate as many sparks as possible per unit of time in order to be able to process a workpiece as quickly as possible. The rate at which a given capacitor is charged depends on the switching frequency and the inductance of the coil used. With coil number 1 and a pulse width frequency of 1000 Hz, the 220 microfarad capacitor is charged to 20 volts in an average of 0.2 seconds. The duty cycle of the PWM signal is 50%. Going higher with the frequency does not work with this coil because then the target voltage is no longer reached in an acceptable amount of time. As the drilling progresses, the coil heats up significantly as the thermal image camera shows. The 0.1mm razor blade is pierced in about 12 minutes after 3621 shots, which corresponds to about 5 shots per second. The result is a nicely round hole with smooth edges. As a final modification, I now use a coil with fewer turns made of thicker enameled copper wire. 
this reduces the ohmic resistance and the inductance of the coil. With a base frequency of 8000Hz, this coil can be controlled in such a way that the MOSFET just doesn't end up in smoke. The thermal imaging camera makes the switching losses of my all too simple electronic design clearly visible. The MOSFETs are shining in bright colors. However, the coil stays completely cool, at least in this test run. I will report in more detail on the subject of switching MOSFETs quickly in a later chapter. For now just keep in mind that this isn't as simple as it sounds. The target voltage of 40V is easily reached, the electrolytic capacitor cannot withstand a much higher voltage. With this setup, the bore is completed in just 60 seconds and 245 shots. As a next step I have to write the software to be able to process different paths with the CNC instead of just drilling holes. I will also explain why there is a second diode to detect short circuits and how to block them with a second MOSFET. The software of the boost converter and CNC offer many starting points for optimization. There is more about EDM in the upcoming video of this series and also on my homofacians.de pages. And if you would like to send me a donation as a motivational boost for the further development of this spark erosion machine, there is also a donate button on my website. Many thanks to everyone who has already made use of it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.